Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not Too Comic Book. This being a show, we're talking about TV shows that are adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the season premiere of The Flash. Great season premiere. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. So the fact is, we got that opening. I was like, this seems weird, and everyone's getting a catchphrase. I was like, oh, this is a dream, especially because Frost is there. I thought this was someone's imagination, but it's like, no, it's a dream. But that dream quickly shifts into a nightmare because it's Barry's greatest fear. It's always been his greatest fear that he will always fear never being fast enough to protect the people he loves. It's always been a fear of his ever since he got his powers with everything that's ever come their way. So it turns out it's been a week since the season eight finale. And so Barry try he constructed a book based on every time he's done any time traveling with Nora and Bart's um accounts of like what their future holds for them barry has constructed basically a guidebook for him and iris and we we don't know where everything ends up but we know where some place like we know like we saw one that's like sue i think it was like in 2024 becomes like the richest woman or something like that in the world so because of like some deals and stuff i think she makes but so it, because Barry makes it seem like it's mainly about Iris and him, and, and I think it's like, right, the people in our general circle will have an idea about, but it's it's mainly a guidebook for their lives. It's like, yeah, you're going to get pregnant in three months, because initially, he's like, he's very cagey about it, because he doesn't want to tell her about it, so it's like, hey, um, when you go to work, just say yes. Turns out Allegra came to her and was like, hey, Catco wants to buy the Citizen, and that way we can expand upon it. It's a blank chat and everything, which I'm like, yeah, Cat Grant! Um, uh, but Iris has a hard time. She's like, wait, the, immediately she was like, wait, how did Barry know about that? And so Barry already knew about the promotion that Kramer was going to offer him. So it's like, okay, cool. He's kind of like right fire on all cylinders. And later that night he ends up, well, he ends up crossing paths with, uh, the new captain boomerang, which, I'm, which I think is interesting. Kind of the look that, uh, Richard Harmon's, um, uh, Captain Boomerang, which Richard Harmon, like, obviously best know for, um, oh god, the 100. I didn't notice, maybe I knew this beforehand and just forgot, I did not know, realize his sister is Jessica Harmon, I didn't know his sister's, uh, name until, uh, like, like I said, maybe I did, but, uh, I, I feel like I probably have references before, I just didn't remember until I looked him up, I was like, his sister's the actress who played Dale in I Zombies, but she was also Nyla in the 100, which I now in retrospect, I'm like, did they ever have any scenes together? They had to, like, you know, they had to have se had scenes together at some point over the years. I'm, I'm sure their characters have been in the same room together, but I was like, I did not realize that was his sister. That's crazy. Uh, like I said, maybe I did say that. I feel like I vaguely feel like I remember talking about that before, but I, I completely forgot about that. Either way, the thing is, his Captain Boomerang kind of reminds me a little bit of the Captain Boomerang from the Suicide Squad game that's coming up. Does that come? Yeah, it come out next month, doesn't it? Suicide Squad killed the Justice League, especially because he's kind of got like that more like dapper look. I don't know because I'm trying to think like, have I ever seen like what Captain Boomerang traditionally looks like in the comics? I don't think I have. Because obviously, my only experience is like the original Captain Boomerang from the Arrowverse, as well as like Jai Courtney's uh, Captain Boomerang from the Suicide Squad movies, and now the Captain Boomerang and the. Um, this upcoming Suicide Squad game, so... What I'm trying to remember is, like, do correct me in the comments down below, wasn't the last time we saw the OG Captain Boomerang back in Season 5 of Arrow? Specifically the Season 5 finale? I want to say, I could be 100% mistaken, but I could have sworn that that might be when the last time we saw him, but like I said, do correct me in the comments down below, but either way... Uh, and it was so interesting because Barry was like, well, we didn't catch him, so uh, we must not catch him today or something like that. Because Barry's following the notes and he's like, oh, I don't see anything about it. So like, uh, guys, take the rest of the day off. And Iris is not as thrilled about the notion of like knowing their exact future. And she doesn't really explain that to Barry because it's a lot. It's only been a week since her time sickness was cured everything last season. It's like, that's taking care of Thawne is going like, we're good. And now it's like, now Barry's throwing this at her where it's like, cool, your life has been so out of your own control lately. Now your life is too in control where it's like, it's being laid out about exactly what your life is supposed to be. Oh, you're going to get pregnant with Nora in three months. So, and then we find, and then the particles start happening. I was like, what? And then I was like, wait, why are they focusing so much on the calendar? Like the date and stuff. And then, and in the moment it's like, oh, the sock on the desk again. I was like, it's a time loop, baby! 
I was like, perfect timing. There was recently, because I've said it fairly recently, but once again, time and time again, if you don't know, I love me a good time loop. I love me a Groundhog Day, and I love that Cecile makes the reference. She's like, come on, guys, like, is no one else really going to jump on this? And everyone just kind of nods. I guess it's like, it's like, yes, because that's the go-to movie when it comes to time loop stuff, because it's the easiest one, the pop cultural example that everyone goes to. It's, you know, I'm not saying it's the first, like, time loop movie thing ever but i'm sure like it's the one that probably most people go to the most it's the most once again pop classic pop cultural example and once i think i talked about this recently because there was spoilers a pseudo time loop episode of quantum leap recently like uh two episodes back uh not this week's episode but the week before um well i should just say last week uh but i I really like Time Loop. I, I, I just think it's always like, when you have something like science fiction-y, there's always room for a Time Loop episode. So it might be cliche science fiction. I don't care. I love them because I'm always interested to see how uh, different mediums, like different shows or movies or whatever are going to end up handling it. Either way, um, so Barry ends up trying to stop Captain Boomerang, but ends up getting killed in the process and it reboots them and i love that it's like yeah like barry dying like resets both of them because for iris it's like wait what what just happened i was just in the i was there at um at uh headquarters and boom we're, we're here because at first it's like wait is this deja vu what's going on here and now they're having to repeat things over and over again they work with chester and it's like no no we're gonna figure this out we've already lived the day twice don't worry iris like just you know go to work like you do every day and so they're trying stuff out i even love it like on the 15th try chester's like you're lying. It's like, we've done this 15 times. It's like, yeah. And I was like, hey, like, he's wearing like that, like the little like bomb suit and stuff like that. And uh, Barry's about to touch the device and it goes off and they just both look at each other like, damn it. So, uh, and by the end of it, the number gets up to 58 times. So it's like, wow, just repeating itself over and over. Again. And I love that every time that it's just a jump scare for Iris because uh, Barry would just because obviously it's just kind of a sudden shock and he's like ah and she gets scared and even at one point she hit him with a pillow it's like stop scaring me every time it's super adorable but I also love like I mean and I I figured as much because the trailer kind of really focuses on this element but I figured like once again the CW seasonal trailers their series trailers like when it's a new series is different but their seasonal trailers typically are only taken from like the first episode maybe some other stuff sprinkled in from later parts but it's typically just the first episode but um this element of Barry's excited about like like he's thinking like right you just have to say yes because you haven't said yes to the job and maybe like this whole time loop thing is happening the reason why we're stuck here and can't get out of it is because you're not like keeping the timeline the same your your refusal to accept the timeline but for and Iris is just kind of like oh I'm a drink I'm gonna have fun you want a Marlo let's get drunk it's like well and, and, and to be fair it's not like Barry could get drunk you know the high you know super speed metabolism and everything but. I, I can understand where Iris is coming from because, like, no, that's the point of life. Like, you shouldn't be able to map life out. Like, it takes away the excitement of life when it's full of surprises. You, when life, when you know every aspect of life, it makes it boring. But also understand where Barry's coming from, where it's like, dude, we've been through so much over these years. I mean, especially like this most recent time. It's like I, when I thought Thawne legitimately killed Iris, like my world fell apart. I mean, he's been in that situation. I mean, when he thought Savitar killed Iris. Um, he literally lost Iris to the multiverse being destroyed, you know, during Crisis on Infinite Earth. She didn't just die. She was wiped out of existence with trillions upon trillions of people. So there's that. Um, then you also have the Mirrorverse situation. And then also you have the time sickness. Thing. It's been very consistently, what, four seasons back to back. Well, three seasons of back to back stuff specifically circling Iris. That, of course, is going to make you worried. Like, yes, he's worried about the entire team. But Iris in particular, once again, she's this lightning rod. And it's just he can't imagine losing her, the, the family that he's. He's found and built for himself that he, you know, he's scared and he wants to keep that all um, intact. And he just kind of went overboard in his need to protect them, 
You know, because for him, it's like, but this is our future, the future we want it. But for Iris, it's like, uh, let me choose it. Like, by you making it all road mapped out, it feels like there is no choice anymore. There's no free will. You know, and like I said, especially considering how out of control her life's been recently. And now, like I said, this is the extreme lane of control. She wants some control, but she wants to be able to make those decisions on her own, not be made for her and make it go Oh, so my, my choice doesn't matter because any choices I make are just going to be already predetermined, you know? Free will versus uh, predetermination and that, that whole angle to it. So, But for Barry, he feels like Iris not choosing that and makes him feel like, oh, she doesn't want this future anymore. When she goes to talk to Cecile and Joe, and I do like it. Like, he doesn't say it, but I do like that Cecile is the mother role for him. It's like, I don't think, I'm trying to, do correct me if I'm wrong, like, he's never actually referred to Cecile as kind of, mom i don't know if iris has either it's like i mean she is like she's her stepmom and everything but it's like yeah like i mean he, he like he treats joe like a dad and i think he has compared joe to a dad because joe has been a dad to him but i don't think he's ever outright called him dad or called um cecile mom or anything like that maybe he has i feel like i might be misremembering that whatever the case may be um but they for Joe, he made Barry realize, it's like, yes, this is a great future and stuff like that. I get it. You accounted for everything. And Cecile's like, yes, like a good detective would. You're trying to account for every possibility, which I don't think you can. But also, it's like, you know, that doesn't always equate to everything. And it's just like, knowing the future, if you, you know, life is supposed to be surprises. It's supposed to be an adventure. Like, yes, there are bad stuff around the corner, but there's also so much good and beauty around the corner, too. Um, that you're kind of taking that taking a little steam away and even joe's like right with all this stuff you're counting this is just great and everything but does it say in any moment here that iris is happy because he's like hey, once again barry's so focused on the destination what about the adventure there you're so focused on like these events happen but what about the things the feelings the emotions the things that led up to it you're just worried about the end result what about the journey there the journey is the most important part more so, more more important than the destination and everything in some regards. So, and uh, for Barry, it is the thing of all he needs is Iris. It's like right, let's kind of enjoy what we have. Like he hasn't, like Iris wants to be present, especially after everything she went through with the time sickness, floating around past, present, and future, not being able to stay grounded. And it's like let's stay in this moment. Let's not get so caught up in the future, you know. Not let's not like have it written for us especially considering how malleable the future is so barry it's like right i just want to be with you i want to stay in this moment even when we have to live in this uh time loop forever at the very least i'm with like the greatest woman in the world you know and I, when he put the book in the fireplace i was like please just snap your fingers and start to uh, spark the fire and I'm like, he did i was like yeah it makes the most sense it's like the little things but i love this stuff and starting to fire it's like yeah i figured as much uh, and so this next loop, they decide to handle things differently. And I, I love it. Um, instead of going the cat co route, uh, they're getting a loan from Sue so they can actually, uh, buy up like the coast, coastal, like, um, was it coast city, um, news or whatever like buy them up because they're already kind of struggling there's layoffs and that way she can build out um the citizen in her own way without it kind of like having it obviously like you know cat would have ran it like you know she would have had to been under someone else but now it's like right we get to run things my way instead of having to go things the cat co route so after that uh, I was like, oh, we got some time to kill. So they go swimming and enjoy themselves. And seeing them actually just like, because they've been away on vacations before, but that's always happened out, off, like off screen. So they see them kind of like enjoying themselves. So like, oh, how much time do we have? Like enough for refills. But uh, did you see my cannonball? She's like, yeah, I saw your cannonball. He's like, it, it was a nice splash. It was, it was a, you see my splash? She's like, I saw your splash. He's like, it was a big splash. I was like, you're such a little kid in that moment, Barry. And especially her being like, yes, sweetie. I like kind of almost like, yes, honey. Yes, dear. I saw your splash. Yes, it was super Vic, it was super cool. You are awesome. Like, I love that. That's super adorable. So, afterwards, they go after Captain Boomerang themselves, but, um, and they end up taking him down because it's like, cool, uh, I'm not alone this time. Hit him with the one two punch. Uh, well, Iris 
kid him with quite a punch, but he ends up setting off the device, which causes like a nuclear fusion explosion, and Barry's going to try and stop it. And his way of stopping it was, to, like, at first, it's like, obviously, time is slowing down. I'm like, what is he going to do? And I was like, the moment it started, kept spreading despite him touching, I was like, wait. I was like, are you phasing an entire nuclear fusion explosion through the entire city? Oh, Barry. It's like, yeah, like, no one expected you to do that. I was like, that's actually pretty sick. So that's actually pretty dope. So they ended up saving the day. Captain Boomerang got away. They ended up having to explain everything. I also love that um, Allegra and uh, Chester finally kiss. And you're like, yes, nothing like uh, the impending doom of a nuclear fusion explosion to make you finally take that leap. But it's still the awkward thing around it, which... Obviously, it's like, oh, like, obviously, all these 58 times Barry and Iris are like, oh, yeah, it was actually kind of, you know, romantic, and Chuck and Allegra kind of look at each other, so that's pretty dope. So, but it does show, set up the fact is that uh, there is more behind Captain Boomerang. Like, the fact is that it's like, right, he can teleport away and stuff like that. Is that kind of part of his normal arsenal? I'm trying to, because I, I haven't seen the gameplay video for... The Suicide Squad game in a while. I don't remember, like, his main way of getting around. Because I think some of them have, like... I know, like, Deadshot, maybe Harley, and King Shark, and probably him, all have... Or does he have a teleport in the game, too? I don't remember. Or am I conflating out with some of the... No, because I was about to say, like, am I conflating out a little bit with, like, the Gotham Knights? How, like, some of them get around. I I'm going on a whole tangent. I'm sorry. Uh, but I I'm so curious... Is that more, like, inclined... I mean, he has the tech boomerangs and everything, so, you know, it's not too out of pocket to believe he's got a teleporter on him and everything. But, um... Either way, uh, when it's all said and done, uh, they know now know, like, right, he can't be working alone. Um, so, now the question is, finding that person who's backing him and what their plan is. But, you know, they'll deal with that soon enough. But for now, once again, kind of living in the moment and things are kind of going the way they want them to. You know, once again, kind of forging the future in their own past and not having it just planned out for them. And so Barry's kind of almost like, a yeah, let's kind of have like a, what was it, a moon baby uh, adventure kind of like rather than kind of, because they've never had the more traditional um uh, like, uh, God, because they did have their honeymoon of sorts, but it's still, like, in between all of the craziness that is Team Flash and what they have to deal with. Um, even to the point Joe's kind of wondering about the future, because Cecile is starting to use her power to flex more. Even Chester's like, yeah, you're going to be the muscle of Team Flash, which you could tell Joe wasn't too happy about that, because it's like, right, so much of his family's already connected to this superhero business. His daughter's connected to it. His sons, both of his sons are connected to it. So the family they've kind of built around all of this is connected to this. And for Joe, it's, you know, he's scared of like, right, this superhero stuff has been a part of our lives for the past nine years, which he's like, I'm enjoying. There's been good there's been bad but it wouldn't trade that but the problem is what's next for us and he's saying suggesting that him and cecile should leave central city you know kind of i think find their own adventure post all of this um i also forgot to talk about it barry did go back to kramer but he had iris's help saying like right he'll juggle his duties as the flash as well as his duties as a ci with this new position because iris will be there to kind of help him balance it out being um the flash that they've always been that you know it's like it's the two of them together that makes them the perfect flash you know so that's quite an interesting development i'm curious to see when or do they plan on telling the rest of team flash telling barry and iris because we do know that barry will eventually like him and iris will eventually move into the house and it's like i guess that's after joe and cecile leave central city because barry knows like oh we move in but he probably doesn't know the circumstances of it plus he also probably doesn't now because things are different that might be escalated a lot quicker in the timeline than maybe it originally would have been um but then we get the ending where we see um uh, we see uh, Captain Boomerang with whoever's hooking him up. And whoever it is is a speedster. But I think it's that negative energy. Once again, Thawne is gone. But all that was Thawne, that hatred, that negative speed force still is alive. And 
it seems like it's potentially found in new holes. That's what the season eight finale was kind of implying. Like the the reverse flash will return, but it just won't be Thawne. Like someone else is going to end up, interestingly enough, taking that mantle. That negative speed force is going to find its way to somebody else. That darkness can't ever, I guess, in conjunction with the speed forces themselves, like that negative speed force can never fully be. There always has to be this equilibrium of sorts. So it's always going to exist to some extent. So. It seems like that's what's potentially going on here. I've gotten, obviously we see it a little bit in the trailer and I've heard like some of the talks about some of like some of the cast that's going to be returning as well as characters that will be returning on this final season. But it's going to be pretty dope to see ultimately what ends up happening. I, once again, I do believe, I, I didn't look it up, but I'm fairly certain this season's only going to be 13 episodes. Once again, final seasons typically are. With the exception of Arrow, if I remember correctly, Arrow was only yeah Arrow was only ten episodes, but I think this final season is going to be thirteen, if I'm not mistaken. I, 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 any corrections, I'll add in the comments down below. But I'm very, very excited to have the flashback for one final run to see where all of this ends up taking us. Um, very excited to see where the next episode takes us with all of this going forward. But uh, really, that's all I wanted to talk about. To the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and good bye.